Today marks the 100th day since Russian President Vladimir Putin's troops invaded the country and heavy fighting continues there. As President Zelensky estimates that 20% of Ukraine is now under Russian control. ABC News' Brett Clinton joins me now live from Kyiv, Ukraine for more on this. So, Brit, you were hearing Ukraine's media is calling to this milestone 100 days of fortitude and certainly the way Ukrainians in the armed forces and civilian life stood up and met this challenge has amazed the world. What can you tell us about what this day means? President Zelensky in one of his defiant video addresses marked 100 days by praising the resistance saying that victory will be ours but we heard from NATO uh, the head of NATO uh, saying that this will be a prolonged war that this could be a war of attrition and again a hundred days Terry with no end in sight this is a hundred days of needless death of needless destruction of needless heartache and Brit, we're learning more, I guess, about electronic warfare, obviously a crucial part of 21st and 20th century warfare for all that matters. How this type of technology shaping the war in Ukraine? What can you tell us about that? Speaking, this includes defeating drones. This means intercepting GPS signals. It could mean uh, jamming um, radio or, or mobile communications. It could mean eavesdropping on communications. And going into this war, and this is interesting, that uh, the perception was that the Russian forces, that Russia had a huge advantage in electronic warfare. But when Russia failed to capture this capital, uh, Kyiv, that it kind of changed that perception and, and that it thought that perhaps um, the, these critical um, electronic um, communications weren't as advanced as initially thought. Thank you, Brit. Now, far away from Kyiv in the North Ukraine, there are hundreds of small farming villages in the Ukraine that were invaded and occupied by the Russians. This is the story of just one of them. Alexander has hidden the clothes he was wearing on the night the Russians came for him. He's keeping them safe as evidence of war crimes. He shows us the blood on his Texas bottoms where a nail was hammered into his knee and the fabric that was used to tie his hands behind his back. He has scars on his face where he was burnt with cigarettes. He doesn't want us to identify him because he's scared that the Russians might return. Follow the quick news in one hour ahead. I'm Lisa Nurul. Good evening and see you.